the budget GPU market might just be about to hot up, with the rumor mill in full swing with information on new AMD and Nvidia cards. But when will they get here? Will I actually be able to buy one and how much is it going to cost? They're all questions I'll be diving into in today's video, talking about exactly what we know, from pricing to availability and VRAM, and looking at what these rumors might actually mean for the state of the PC hardware market. Let's do this. Now let me start a bit more calmly by talking about what actually is rumored to be coming out and whether or not we think it will actually arrive. On the Nvidia side of the equation, we've got some really solid information about the RTX 4060 Ti and a recent leak from MSI shows the RTX 4060 to also be on the way. The 4060 Ti is rumored to land before the end of May, timing up perfectly with Combitex, the major tech event in Taiwan that basically sets the precedent for new hardware for the rest of the year. It would make sense for this card to be debuted before Computex so that partners can include the cards in their Computex showcase and press coverage and also so that partners can use the cards inside of their systems and really show off their next generation of products. The rumor mill suggests that this card will land with an MSRP of anywhere between $449 and $399, potentially putting it in line with last gen's 3060Ti. And if recent 4070 activity at this card over here or anything to go by, achieving prices below this MSRP might just be feasible yet. The 4060 we've got a little bit less information on, but we'd hazard a guess that this will probably land for 50 to 70 US dollars less than the 4060 Ti. It was reported a few weeks ago to be coming in at more like the 440, 450 price point, but if recent embarrassment around 4070 sales and availability is anything to go by, I'm going to say that Nvidia might come out the doors cheaper at that 399 US dollar price point. Another reason they made do this is because recent news of AMD's new GPU releases could also be set to put some pressure on Team Green. That's right, AMD are rumored to be missing out the 7800 and 7700 lineups for now and going straight down to the 7600. And AMD won't be escaping the heat of my torch in this video either as their $899 and $999 next gen cards respectively obviously haven't proved a massive hit at their price points for this to be the case. While board manual manufacturers will always want to deliver budget GPUs eventually, you can guarantee they'd rather sell the higher end, higher profit margin designs first. It just makes logical sense. Now, the one thing that looks to set the RX 7600 apart from its NVIDIA 40 series rivals is VRAM, the area that the rumor mill has had me the most disappointed. It's rumored that the 4060 and 60 Ti might only ship with a measly eight gigabytes of video memory. Now, in many respects, I don't really believe this and I don't see how NVIDIA could actually do this, but that is what all the sources are pointing to. Remember, of course, their RTX 3060 ships with 12 gigabytes Quite how they can bring out a next-gen 4060 Ti with less memory than that confuses me. Yes, the 3060 Ti has less than the 3060, but it's a card that came out first. Whether I could recommend an 8GB card in the current day and age, I'm not totally convinced that I could. I would urge you to throw caution to the wind on these spec sheets though, because not all specs are made equal. Take a look for example at the CUDA core count for the rumored RTX 4060 Ti. It is actually less than the last generation 3060 Ti, but this is something we've seen on the new 4070. The new next gen CUDA cores are so powerful and are running so fast with those high clock speeds that actually Nvidia can afford to put less of them on the card, reducing the theoretical manufacturing cost while still achieving more performance. Comparing CUDA cores from the current gen and last gen isn't apples to apples if the clock speed and overall architectures of the card are indeed different. Interestingly, all the cards are run on PCI Gen 4, not particularly surprising considering the current top end cards also use that standard, meaning those of you without a PCI Gen 5 motherboard needn't be too concerned. It also looks like both AMD and Nvidia are going to adopt Nvidia's new media seeding tactic of delaying coverage on cards that cost more than the manufacturer MSRP until after the initial embargo. Now, what that means is that when the card first drops, you'll only see reviews, PC builds, and buyer's guides that feature designs at MSRP for the first day or even couple of days. Cards that cost more, such as typically the Game & Edge Trio from MSI, the Asus Strix, or the Palette Game Rock OC Special Diamond RGB Edition, will have to wait until a later 
date. Now there has been some controversy to this practice as whether or not the likes of MSI, Asus and Gigabyte can make loads of money on the cards at MSRP in the first place is kind of disputed. But what it does show is that Nvidia and AMD do have an eye on making sure that they launch the more cost effective design first. And best believe if Nvidia do launch the 4060 Ti, the good news also expands out to future prospective 4070 owners. As you can guarantee that if they do launch the 4060 Ti for just 399, either they're going to have to release a cheaper version of the 4070 to sit somewhere between its $599 MSRP and the $399 MSRP of the 4060 Ti, or perhaps what's more likely is we might see permanent baked in price reductions on not only cards like the 4070, but more expensive designs like the 4070 Ti, 4080, and maybe even beyond that. This comes alongside, of course, a backdrop of other PC hardware getting that bit more affordable. There's a long way to go, but DDR5 memory is now cheaper than ever. PCI Gen 4 SSDs are basically at rock bottom, with power supplies being really the only expensive part at the moment when you look at that new tech adoption. ATX3 and PCI Gen 5 power supplies are still confusingly actually quite expensive. Things then are starting to actually hot up in the budget and mid-range GPU market. I don't want to be ignorant to the fact that these rumors aren't of course going to spell a new dawn for those looking to build a PC for, I don't know, six or seven hundred dollars, and that a replacement for the 3050 and AMD RX 6500 XT, something we really could do with sooner rather than later, by the way, AMD aren't quite here yet. But it certainly brings us one step closer, and it's interesting to see that people voting with their wallets, spending less money on expensive next-gen cards, has only gotten ushered in the cheaper GPUs that bit earlier. Look at how long it took the likes of AMD and Nvidia to filter down from their more expensive cards last time around versus this generation. If these rumors prove to be true, which by the sounds of it, they could well be, things might just be about to get that bit better for the PC gaming and hardware market. The first sub $400 GPU to be released in like two years might finally be upon us. What a cause for celebration. If you found this video useful, exciting, entertaining, or otherwise, make sure to get subscribed. If you'd like to see hands-on coverage of any new cards when they launch, make sure to get following us as well and read our website link down in the description below for the latest guides on the best GPUs for a range of budgets. As always though, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.